Welcome back. So I was in on Saturday and uh, getting things uh, prepared for removing the uh, old compressor there. And so I had to remove that exhaust manifold and a couple other different things in order to to get it out. Uh, but it wasn't too difficult to do all that. And then uh, once I got it out of there, I found out that it was basically junk. Uh, there were some loose parts on the inside, so some metal had, had sort of, you know, come away and whatever. And ultimately, I'm um, just going to put the new one in when it arrived there on Monday, which you'll see here in a minute. And I think the old one kind of destroyed itself. Maybe it didn't have enough oil in there. Not sure exactly what, but uh, anyway, it's uh, junk, basically. And so it turns out that the gear strut there, or the nose strut there that I have, actually has a shimmy damper built in here. I'm kind of just testing to see how much effort it takes just to move it when it's outside of the centering V. And how it works is there's hydraulic fluid moving from one section to another through um, where the centering thing is. So anyway, uh, more on that in a little bit. And here's the exhaust manifold uh, now that it's off. And I wanted to show you in here. And you can see this kind of like one tube that sort of guides into the other in there, which is totally clean. looks like it's brand new. So uh, I'm just sort of looking at this with respect to the sort of temperatures coming out of the cylinders. And I don't think I'm running it too hot at all. The Where I've got the sensor there is reading, you know, like 14 or 1700 degrees, but it's right up where the Y pipe is. And so things are converging there and that's going to drive the temperatures up. But the fact that my heat wrap there hasn't even got crispy um, and wants to fall off um, and the, the fact that it looks so clean inside of there, it doesn't even look burnt or anything like that, um, like it's had any sort of real heat in there makes me uh, think that um, I'm not running the cylinders that hot. It'd be nice to put a sensor right there, but I just don't have time to do that right now. So uh, anyway, kind of happy with uh, what my EGTs are doing. And so here's the new compressor. And um, I managed, this arrived on Monday, managed to actually get it on my drill press there and drill some holes in the bolts there. Uh, and they were super tight. I tried snugging them down, but they weren't going to tighten anymore. And so I managed to safety wire them. So um, whatever happened to the last one shouldn't happen to this one again. There's no way those bolts are going to come loose. And uh, so hopefully we'll be all good to go on that. So after I got that done, I uh, started uh, reinstalling everything. You can see the compressors in there and uh, getting the things organized with the bracket for the governor. And uh, here you can see I'm putting in the last thing, which is the the uh, last intake pipe there that goes into the engine from the second intercooler and just getting that all fitted up and tightening up the, uh, the little rubber um, elbow joins there on either end. So it didn't take too long uh, to get that all sorted out and so this is um, you know now Tuesday that I'm doing this and so the guys are coming from the local you know AC place there to charge it up again hopefully uh, tomorrow morning Wednesday is what I've got them scheduled and uh, hopefully we don't have any problems and I've got I bought some more oil for there it's the PAG uh, 46 oil for this one and uh, I still got to put, put that connector on there and then put the two different uh, lines on there which are just sitting there so I've got to put some oil in there first thing in the morning so I've, I've got some of that just to top it up a little bit more and I know exactly how much I talked to the Nissan's company and found out how much was in there so I know how much more to add, and that should also solve a problem of anything happening. And what I also did on Monday while I was waiting for the compressor to show up, I sanded um, the top surface of this wing and also the both sides of the winglet, just with 400. It didn't need that much. Um, as you can see, it's just sort of uh, smoothed it off there, and I'll get on there with the polishing wheel and uh, smooth that off in the coming days. So next thing um, was I'm um, going to put a new tire on the nose wheel here, because the old one I didn't believe was that great. Um, it had a hop in it, and you'll see that in a minute. So my little trick here is I get it sort of jacked up, put my weights on the uh, the, the uh, little um, tug there, and lift the aircraft up, and then put some blocks under it like we used to, and then I can work on the tire there. So if you have a look at this, uh, when I spin this tire, see if you can see um, the hop in there. do it a little faster yeah so I'm concerned that the fact that I've got a hop in there and I was running 55 psi which I think I should only be running maybe 35 psi I I think that's contributing to the no shimmy so I'm going to try it with this new tire that I got which is a high performance uh, Michelin one 
um, the latest one that they have that's designed specifically, or it's been approved just for Cirrus right now, but I got one from Aircraft Spruce. And you'll see I change that out in a minute. And then I'm going to try it with lower pressure, and I'm also going to see if I can fix this problem of what I think is the fork is moving uh, on the strut there when it got into like a, a shimmy thing. I think it actually was exacerbated by the fact that this fork uh, has the ability to move there on the strut, um, which you'll see here in a second. So, because the that the bottom base there of the strut there is slotted so you can do the alignment on there so if you look at that see those slots in there so they're not just straight holes they're slots so you've got that much movement in there and the idea is that you're supposed to use and I've read online you're supposed to use this um, retaining compound from Loctite uh, on that metal face there and also on the top where the little um, brackets go on the top there and instead of doing that I didn't have that in there and what ended up happening was I had uh, powder coat on the brackets on both sides of that, which is shiny and slippery. And on top of that, some of the hydraulic fluid from filling up the strut had leaked down on there, and it was basically it seeped into the gap there. And so when I pulled that out, you can kind of see in there, it was very shiny and very slippery. So th there wasn't really that much stopping that from sliding on there. So I think what happened was when the shimmy got underway, this was able to rotate even just a little bit, which caused it to sort of, you know, want to walk left and right. So you can see on there, it looks like it's the powder coat's been wearing from going back and forth. So here I'm uh, letting the air out of the uh, old tire set up there. And, uh, you know, this was a good tire that was on here. It was one that came from Behringer. But, um, you know, in, in speaking with some knowledgeable people, they recommended putting a Michelin on there. So I've got this one, and it's a much more sort of stout tire. It's rated a little higher. Um, and you know Michelin being a really good brand so uh, my job is to switch that out and I haven't done that before so this is my first time uh, doing this and this basically how this rim works is it's a tubeless tire so you just undo uh, all the allen bolts here obviously after taking all the pressure out of the tire and uh, the rim just comes apart and it has an o-ring uh, in between the two parts there so there you can see uh, what it looks like and so I just gave it a bit of a clean up there and uh, started to put it together facing that way but then switched it over and so here I'm just putting the o-ring back into that the sort of narrow face there and then just carefully drop that in on the other side there and make sure that the o-ring was staying seated where it's supposed to be because the groove is in the bottom side and the groove that the o-ring sits in was in the bottom side so I got that in there and um, put my bolts in there and I talked them up as well. I've already talked them prior to this bit of video here. I just wanted to show you how I did it. Um, the torque spec on there was, I think it was 105 inch pounds. So I think it was 8.75 uh, foot pounds. And so I just did it to 8.8. .8. And so I did all those bolts in there and you can see I've already put air in there and inflated it and I'll test to make sure it's holding air. And uh, in the meantime, taking the powder coat off these brackets there that are, you know, going to hopefully hold that nose gear in place so it doesn't want to move, you know, in those slots when it gets bolted up. And I also got the uh, retaining compound, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, but I didn't get a chance, you know, today to do the alignment um, and also haven't had a chance yet to take the wheel down to uh, SNS down there uh, at the airport and have them do the balancing on it. Uh, but I've got it back on here as you can see because uh, in the morning I needed to be able to move the aircraft uh, in order to be able to start the engine for when the AC guys come to charge it. So I just got this all bolted back together just temporarily right now. And then uh, after the AC has been charged I'll take the tire off and go and get it balanced and then bring it all back and then uh, align it again and put the retaining compound uh, in between the fork and the strut and uh, let that set up for 24 hours because that's how long it takes um, for it to cure and then I'll probably be able to do another taxi test on there and just see if, if these the combination of these things that I'm trying to so lower pressure new tire and um, setting that re retaining compound in there maybe all that will fix it so if you look at that tire there that doesn't have any hop in it at all now it's much more uh, accurate or you know 
straight tire compared to the other one that had the hop in it so maybe the combination of these things will uh, fix my problem and so there's the primer uh, the Loctite primer which basically helps the bonding agent work better and, and uh, then there's the Loctite itself which is a uh, retaining compound that's supposed to go in there and as that's that's per the lands air spec so I'll be doing that uh, tomorrow Anyway, that's the update for the first half of this week, and I'll give that a try, and if that doesn't work, then I'll be going to the plan B with the new shimmy damper. Thanks for watching.